The eclectic paradigm developed by John H. Dunning is a comprehensive framework used to analyze the attractiveness of foreign direct investment. It provides a structured approach for firms to assess the potential benefits and drawbacks of expanding their operations into foreign markets. The eclectic paradigm, also known as the OLI framework, posits that firms internationalize based on three key types of advantages. Advantage 1. Ownership-specific advantages. These are firm-specific assets that provide a competitive edge. Examples include patents and trademarks. Companies like Pfizer leverage their patents to protect unique drug formulas. Brand names. Apple's strong brand identity allows it to command premium prices globally. Access to resources. Ford. Google's advanced algorithms and large data sets are proprietary assets. Economies of scale. Toyota benefits from large-scale manufacturing efficiencies. Unique knowledge. Tesla's expertise in electric vehicle technology is a key advantage. These advantages enable firms to stand out in the marketplace, providing them with leverage in foreign markets. Advantage 2. Internalization advantages. This aspect is rooted in transaction cost theory which suggests firms may internalize operations to avoid market inefficiencies. For instance, vertical integration. A company might acquire its suppliers, backward integration, or distributors, forward integration, to control the entire supply chain. For example, Amazon's acquisition of Whole Foods allows it to better control its grocery supply chain. Reducing market failures. Firms internalize operations to mitigate risks like unreliable suppliers or fluctuating market conditions. Apple's decision to build its own chips is a case in point, ensuring better control over its technology and, and costs. Advantage 3. Location-specific advantages. L. Turrets. These advantages relate to the attractiveness of a particular location for business operations, considering factors such as resource costs, manufacturing in countries with lower labor costs like China for textiles, market size, and expanding into large emerging markets such as India for tech companies, infrastructure, utilizing Singapore's advanced logistics network for efficient global trade. Institutional frameworks. Choosing locations with favorable legal and political environments, such as setting up a tech hub in Silicon Valley. Firms evaluate these factors to decide where to best position their operations to maximize efficiency and market access. Beyond the three primary factors, firms should also consider several other factors when evaluating foreign direct investment opportunities. Cultural differences. Understanding and adapting to cultural nuances can be crucial for success in foreign markets. Political and economic risks. Assessing the stability of the foreign market and the potential for political or economic disruptions. Competitive landscape. Analyzing the competitive environment and the strength of existing competitors. Regulatory framework. Understanding and complying with local regulations and laws. Financial feasibility. Evaluating the financial costs and benefits of the investment. Based on the eclectic paradigm, firms should tailor their international strategies according to their specific advantages. Licensing. If a firm has strong ownership advantages but prefers not to operate abroad directly, Licensing its technology or brand to foreign firms can be effective. For instance, McDonald's licenses its brand and operation model globally. Exports. If a firm has ownership advantages and can produce competitively but is not ready for direct investment, exporting its products is a viable option. Foreign direct investment. For firms with both ownership and location advantages, 
Setting up manufacturing or service operations in foreign markets can be beneficial. An example is Starbucks opening stores worldwide to leverage its brand and adapt to local markets. To determine whether a foreign direct investment is viable, firms must assess the relative importance of these, these three factors. For example, a firm with strong ownership-specific advantages, for example a valuable technology, may be more inclined to invest in a foreign market, even if the location-specific advantages are limited. Conversely, a firm with limited ownership-specific advantages may be more reliant on location-specific factors to justify an investment. For example, a technology company with a proprietary software platform may consider investing in a foreign market with a large potential customer base. The company's ownership-specific advantage, the software, combined with the location-specific advantage, market access, could make the investment attractive. However, the firm would also need to assess internalization advantages, such as whether it can effectively manage operations in the foreign market and protect its intellectual property. Despite its utility, the eclectic paradigm has some conceptual limitations. Complexity. Critics argue that the paradigm's integration of multiple theories makes it overly complex and challenging to apply universally. Assumptions of rationality. The model assumes rational decision-making, which may not always reflect real-world business practices influenced by personal biases or relationships. Neglect of personal relationships The paradigm often overlooks the role of personal networks and relationships in international business, which can be crucial for market entry and success. In conclusion, the eclectic paradigm offers a robust framework for understanding international business expansion by focusing on ownership, internalization, and location advantages. While it provides valuable insights, businesses must consider its limitations and complement it with other factors like personal relationships and market dynamics.